All eyes are on Israel as they continue to make strategic moves against Iran and their nuclear program. Today I have with me an expert in this area to help unpack everything that is going on and to help you understand the times we're living in. I'm Jimmy Evans. Welcome to The Tipping Point Show. Welcome to The Tipping Point Show. I'm Jimmy Evans. I'm so glad that you joined me today. And I've got a very special guest joining me today. But before I introduce him, let me just say, I have my new book out called Look Up. If you haven't ordered it already, it's available now. And so I know a lot of you pre-ordered it, but it came out on December the 31st. And it's talking about when Jesus said, when you see these things begin to happen, look up for your redemption draws near. And the entire book just talks about redemption, what it means for us to be redeemed, which means everything Adam and Eve lost, we're gonna get it back when Jesus returns, including a lot more. And so that's what the book is about. Very encouraging, it will talk about the end times, helping you to understand the end times, but more than that, it'll give you hope for what's just about to happen. Jesus said, when you see all these things happen, look up, but be prepared for the fact that you're about to be redeemed. So if that you haven't ordered the book, order the book, I, I know it will bless you. Also, we're going to Israel uh, next November, December, and all the information there is on your screen. We would love to have you go with us. We're going to be there, I think about 10 days of taking a tour, and it's gonna be educational, inspirational. Uh, can't wait to meet you guys that are gonna go on the trip with us and spend some time with you in the Holy Land. So if you haven't uh, already registered for that, the information is right there on your screen. And I'm excited today to have joining me best-selling author, end times expert, Bill Salas. Bill is the founder of Prophecy Defoe Ministries. He has written 11 books, produced 14 DVDs. He's an author and speaker I've learned a lot from over the years. I'm very glad to have him joining me today to discuss a very important prophetic event, which is also a book Bill has written called Nuclear Showdown in Iran. Bill, thank you for being here. Jimmy, thanks for having me on your program. You bet. Well, listen, I've watched you for years and learned so much from you. And you've got, you're, you're a scholar. I mean, you really are a researcher and you go so deep uh, into the things that you research. And so today we're going to talk about Iran. I want to, I want to start because uh, you're here today and uh, several things have just happened uh, in the news. And one is this earthquake mm. that just happened in Turkey and Syria. The, the death toll that I heard this morning was 5,000, over 5,000 people that have been killed. Mm. And of course, Jesus said there's going to be earthquakes, you know, mm. famines, pestilences, like that. This is a big earthquake in a very strategic area of the world. Do you think anything significant about that other than just the, the devastation and all that? Well, I think it's like Jesus had said, and there would be great earthquakes. He talks about in Luke, Matthew 24, he talks about earthquakes in diverse places. Right. Um, this is a great earthquake, 7.5. I was in a 6.6 .6 earthquake in, I lived in Big Bear Lake, California around 1990, I think it was. And I threw all my TVs off the shelf, my piano went through the wall, all the food and stuff came out of the cabinets. And they say that you go up another 7.5, that's almost a thousand times that's greater terrible. intensity. Yeah. And the, the World Health Organization today came out and said they think there could be up to maybe about 20,000 killed individuals when they get through all the rubble and everything. Wow. I read an article this morning that said that this fault, and I believe they call it the Syrian African fault that runs right through Israel. And they're saying that, of course, Israel has a big earthquake like that about once every century. And they haven't had a huge earthquake. I think it was 1927, the last time they had one like this. So this, and of course, the Bible prophesies huge earthquake in Jerusalem, huge earthquake, the Gog and Magog War, right. and so, which is in the same region. So very significant. China, um, we had the balloon that flew over mm. the United States from China. The, you know, and China is not in this prophecy, the Ezekiel 38 and 39 prophecy. Now, Ezekiel 38 and 39 says many people are with you. So, you know, you have that. But China, um, they're very provocative. Mm -hmm. um, they have you know, infiltrated our businesses, stolen our state secrets. They've infil infiltrated, uh, they say, every college campus in America. Mm -hmm. And now they have this balloon that flies over America. What do you think about that? You think it's just a dumb thing that they let a weather balloon go free, or do you think it's more than that? Well, I think everything is calculated with China. Yeah. Um, they are actually also talking with Saudi Arabia about trying to replace the petrol dollar with the yen, right. which would really halt, hurt our economy as well. Yeah. Um, now China has been calculating for quite some time to sort of dethrone America as the superpower yeah. because they want to replace us and usurp themselves on it. 
So no, I I think that balloon was very strategic. They went over all the important sites across yeah. the country, yeah. uh, and basically got a lot of intelligence. Some people are thinking, well, what if they were to launch a nuclear weapon, an EMP, like a right. pulse from yes. that? Because mm -hmm. you could maybe put one of those on without being detected. An electromagnetic pulse is basically a nuclear weapon that spreads ahead uh, at a certain burst altitude, exploded at a certain burst altitude. It goes out like a speed of light, a canopy, and everything underneath it electronically gets fried out. Right. If you launch a burst altitude of 180 miles up, I believe it is, you can take out the whole country. So, you know, they weren't that high, but, you know, they could certainly take out a speed. We've, we've been warned about this for many years. That's right. About EMP. It's not, not that sophisticated. And then, like you said, that, that could happen. So, you know, it's there are evil people in the world today. And I, now, now, the Chinese people, I believe, are precious. And there's a huge revival happening, a lot of Christians in China. But the Chinese government, they're evil. They're, you know, they're, they're dictators. They're evil. They don't allow the church. They don't allow Christianity. But they do want to. Uh, I, don't know if, I don't know if they have the same belief system as Iran, as in we're Satan and to, to destroy us. But they certainly want to shift in power. Right. They, they want to see the East, uh, you know, predominant over the West. So let's talk about Vladimir Putin for just a minute. The, the war in Ukraine is is so concerning on so many levels. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, Ezekiel 38 is addressed to a man named Gog. Mm -hmm. And uh, it just seems as though Vladimir Putin is, you know, matches the description of a madman in that area of the world mm -hmm. who is, you know, uh, bent on power and uh, ultimately to go down and take a spoil from Israel. Mm -hmm. So what do you think about Vladimir Putin? I mean, is there, because uh, you, you understand so much about you know, Bible prophecy, do you think that there's an end game other than Ezekiel 38, or do you even think he knows the end game? Do you think he's just kind of on a rampage or what? Well, I don't think Vladimir Putin knows the end game like we would know the end game yeah. from the Bible prophecies, but there, were some par there are some parallels with his uh, invasion of Ukraine with Ezekiel 38. Now, of course, Ezekiel 38 is an invasion against Israel with right. the whole coalition of countries, right. uh, much more than just Russia going into Ukraine. But Ezekiel 38.10 talks about this Russian leader who could very well, depending on when Ezekiel 38 happens, right. could be Vladimir Putin, but yeah. we, we can't right. pin that tail on that face yeah. just yet because yeah. we don't know where he'll be.
Russia and their coalition that will include Turkey, Iran. There's nine populations listed in their ancient, Ezekiel's ancient vocabulary, but would include some of the North African countries of Ethiopia, Tunisia, right. Sudan, Somalia, perhaps Morocco, uh, some, some of the breakaway Soviet Union republics, some of the right. stands, Kazakhstan, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And that's a huge coalition coming against Israel. Oh, yeah. And I think Israel at that time will have proven itself to be a very formidable foe because we've got some prophecies we'll talk about today that I think puts, puts, positions Israel into a safer, greater country at that point in time. Well, one of the things I really enjoy about your teaching is you're, you're more methodical than me in the sense that you talk about the Psalm 83 war as being a very specific war, has not been fought yet, more regional war. Mm -hmm. Then you talk about Elam, and that's what we're going to talk about, and which is a part of current-day Iran, about a third of current-day Iran in this prophecy of Jeremiah 49. And then you talk about uh, Ezekiel 38 and 39. So you really go, you layer it more than I would. Mm -hmm. And but I'm saying, and you're right. I mean, I've learned so much from you in that. So I want to I want to talk about, because we were talking before the show, the what's unfolding right now with uh, Iran this has been happening for a long time. And so we're now looking at a really a very, very, uh, you know, impending crisis. Um, it's already a crisis. And Israel is sitting there in the crosshairs. Iran is very provocative. They're provocative in the sense that they're talking about, you know, how they're going to destroy. They've been talking about destroying Israel for many years. But they're now, this is a very public rhetoric that's going back and forth between Israel and Iran. And now Netanyahu is the president. But this, but this nuclear showdown with Iran has been happening for many years. Why don't you talk about that and just talk about how this has unfolded? Yeah, sort of a little brief overview of history would be okay. good, I think, for the viewers, Jimmy. Okay. You know, and I remember Benjamin, well, Iran, let's start off with this, is the elephant in the room in the Middle East. It is right. the big problem for Israel, and not only Israel, but a lot of the Arab states, the Sunni states like Saudi Arabia. And right. We're also very concerned about Iran trying to spread its hegemony as it's doing with its proxies of Hezbollah and Syria.
withdrew from that peace treaty. And then Iran seized the opportunity from that point forward to start advancing fast forward its nuclear program without any checks and balances. So we find out in uh, December of 2020 that they had gotten up to two and a half tons of enriched uranium, which was 12 times beyond the limit they were allowed to do in the JCPOA. They started putting advanced centrifuges together. They started producing 20% of uranium. Now they went up to 60% of uranium recently. Now there are some concerns are already hitting 90% of uranium, which is a threshold for a nuclear weapon. But in the midst of all that, there was threats that Israel would preempt a strike, as right. is still a threat today. Right. And the uh, defense minister, Amir Hatami of Iran at the time, said, well, if you do a preemptive strike, we'll raise Tel Aviv, we'll raise Haifa. In other words an all-out war coming against the major cities inside of Israel. And the thing just keeps on going. And then in November of 2020, another nuclear scientist was assassinated called uh, Mohansen Fakhrizadeh. And then after that assassination, Iran stopped allowing the IAEA to come back in in Mm -hmm. December of 2020 doing any further inspections. So we'll show you, you can't come back in and inspect. They're taking out our scientists. Uh, And then in April of 2021, they announced advanced centrifuges, and on April 11th, the day after, there was a huge explosion and a planned bomb attack in the Natanz right. nuclear site that Mossad was, they figured Mossad had done that, and that means they had been planning that for a while, oh, to yeah. get a bomb inside of there. It shows you how incredible uh, Israel's Mossad is to do that sort of thing. Uh, and then in October 2021, the Knesset approved Israel, 500 billion shekels, $1.5 billion to attack Iran. That was October 2021. And then May of 2022, Israel launched one of its biggest military exercises in decades called Chariots of Fire. Right. And that was all geared up to invading and attacking Iran's nuclear program, also preparing for a multi-front proxy war being ensuing as a result of that, and also preparing for... Uh, casualties inside of Israel. So they set up triage and things like that. So it was a very extensive and exhaustive military exercise. And and now then recently in November of last year, just as we turned the the threshold into the new year, they announced they had a hypersonic ballistic missile that can reach Israel in 400 seconds, which is 6.66 minutes. That's just unbelievable. Hypersonic meaning, meaning, and it's a ballistic missile, so it can carry a nuclear warhead. And it, it, hypersonic means it travels five times the speed of sound. And it's the type of thing that can take out missile defense systems, yeah. this, this hypersonic missile, and it can also be, avoid being detected by missile defense systems. So all the stakes are so high right now that Israel has, in my estimation, has to take an action. It has to take an action very soon. Absolutely. We have much more from Bill and more insight from his interview in our subscriber portion today. To become a subscriber, visit endtimes.com and join us for only $7 a month. Along with the rest of today's interview, you'll get access to all of our End Times articles, shows, and teaching. Join us at endtimes.com today.